what's up my loves my name is Paige this is Pages with Paige and today we're going to be talking about my June book haul hey all so I've just been bulk filming and realized I forgot this information in a few videos so don't forget to check out my June wrap up um, that has a giveaway for reaching 300 subscribers in it all you need to do is go to the video listen to the instructions it's said in the first minute as well as linked in the description um, so follow the instructions and you'll be able to enter into my giveaway that's closing on the 12th of July and the winners will be announced on my video which is going up on the 15th of July so good luck and I'll hopefully see you in the comment section of my June wrap up the first three books I want to talk about I actually paid for them back in February I believe because my manager at the bookstore that I used to go to was going to a convention and Christina Henry the author was going to be there so I asked her to pick up some books and get them signed and personalized for me so I got Red Queen Alice and Looking Glass. Didn't have these so I asked her to pick them up and yeah so she's had them kindly sitting at her place uh, for the past four months and um, finally I got back down to Sydney where I could see her and so yeah I managed to get them. Ah, I love them so much. I'm so, I haven't read any of them but I'm just so excited. I love dark retellings so I really don't know what these are about aside from the fact that they're dark retellings of the fairy tales that they belong to. So Alice and Looking Glass I'm assuming are based off Alice in Wonderland and the Red Queen is following with Alice so I don't know if there's an order but I will look into finding out what that is. Next I got a bit of a chunky monkey and it is It's Not Okay to Feel Blue and Other Lies and this is talking about mental health. It's, uh, it's curated by Scarlett Curtis. It has names like Adam K, Ben Platt, Candace Cuddy Williams, Miranda Hart, and uh, the main reason that I picked this one up is actually because of Hannah Whitten. She is a sex educator uh, YouTuber and I really love her outlook on life and I was curious to see what her collection would be about. I loved Feminists Don't Wear Pink and Other Lies We Tell Ourselves and the way that it was formatted. Ah, so it's okay to be vulnerable. So that's what Hannah's talking about and I'm very excited to pick this up. I think I might split this up and just read it in sections as I feel the desire rather than read it in one big chunk which I did with Feminists Don't Wear Pink but Feminists were significantly shorter. So yeah, this is definitely a chunky monkey. Next I picked up a book at one of our cheaper retail stores um, and this was thanks to Cara from Bianca Reads and that is Fail is Fair by Hannah Kaplan. I know this is murder and that's it. <laughs> um, in the morning I put on makeup, go to the salon, an old lady gives me new nails, looks at the bruises on my neck and scratches across my face. Doesn't say anything. I point at my hair and I say this colour. You know what it's called? She shakes her head. No, I say revenge. Yeah, I think it's the result of a sexual assault attack and so they decide to get revenge that way. Next up um, for a book club that one of my high school friends was hosting uh, we read Dark Emu by Bruce Pascoe. If you want to hear more of my thoughts I will leave the June wrap up linked up above um, and this is just putting forth an argument that maybe the hunter gathering label isn't as accurate as the, the white colonizers led us to believe um, and just evidence of a different way of living and the way that we should be able to ask the questions of why aren't we drawing on Aboriginal knowledge to have sustainable land practices to begin with. Yeah, I think it was a really compelling argument and I'm keen to learn more. Speaking of education, I realized that there was a significant lack in my own knowledge about a lot of different topics and so I've decided to pick up some books to help educate me in that. Um, the first one was the only one that I got on a separate day and that is Talking to My Country by Stan Grant. Stan Grant uh, has found my recently released a book called Australia Day which April from Aprilis Maximus has read and she really enjoyed it so I figured I should probably start at the beginning. It's just Stan Grant talking about his own thoughts about race identity and history. So it says direct, honest and forthright. Stan is talking to us all. He might not have all the answers but he wants us to keep on asking the question how can we be better? So I think that's a really important first step and I'm very very interested in continuing on my education journey. So then I went into Sydney City. I got a little stack. 
So the first book I picked up was in Kinokonia and that was Homeland Calling, um, edited by Ellen Van Nieven and this is words from a new generation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voices. So it's a collection of poems created from hip hop song lyrics that channel culture and challenge stereotypes. So I'm really interested in picking this up. It looks fascinating and I'm really keen to dive into this. I think also on the black, yeah, check out many of the original songs and music videos on Spotify or YouTube and all royalties of the sale of the book will go towards Desert P Media's training and development programs in Indigenous communities. So definitely was very keen to pick this one up and dive into it. Next up I went to Abby's and I was originally looking for White Rage um, but nowhere had it in stock and it is available on script so I'm reading it that way but I picked up Me and White Supremacy by Layla Epstein and this started as an Instagram movement to challenge your own perspectives and check your white privilege and just see how it is impacting on your day-to-day -day life and there are little reflection activities that you can do and a way of learning more about your own privilege and how you can change it or direct it into a way that is productive and helpful to a wider community. So you can dismantle your own white supremacy. And yeah, I'm really, really interested in picking this up and doing the activities. I, it's not going to be a once sit down, read through, do them all. It's going to be an ongoing discussion and an ongoing change to the way that I conduct myself and my life. And then I went into Dimmix. And Dimmix is a three story tall uh, building, not as tall as pals in Portland, that's fine. Um, but they had 75% off most of these books. How, how could I say no? Um, the one that wasn't discounted was Meet Me at the Intersection, edited by Rebecca Lim and Evelyn Quellamina. And this is a collection of short stories, poems, and memoirs uh, from writers who are First Nations, people of color, LGBTQIA+, and or living with a disability, and it's exploring life from each of the author's perspectives. I'm really interested in picking this up. I know that April also then ordered it when I showed it to her, and it has a collection of different people like Mimi Lee, Omar Sakar, Wendy Chen, Yvette Walker, and Alice Pun. So very, very interested in seeing the different narratives and poems and memoirs that are in this. Then for my bargain buys, um, the last one that I actually found but was very thankful was Amal Unbound by Aisha Seed. I've seen this everywhere, the cover is beautiful and I have no idea what it's about. Amal loves learning and dreams of becoming a teacher. Then something unimaginable happens. After an accidental run-in with the son of her village's corrupt landlord, she is forced to be his mother's servant in order to pay off her own family debt. At the opulent and corrupt Khan estate, Amal realises that she will have to find a a way to work with others to bring about change and to achieve her dreams. Okay, so probably gonna cry. Oh my god. Yeah, um, definitely very keen on picking this up. Uh, but if this is middle grade, I might leave it for Believathon 3, which is in November. If not, then I will dive into it pretty soon. Next, I found How to Argue with a Racist by Adam Redford. I'm just gonna read the inside blurb because I feel that it summarizes it beautifully. How to Argue with a Racist is a vital manifesto for a 21st century understanding of human evolution and variation and a timely weapon against the misuse of science to justify bigotry. So it covers politics, migration, education, sport, and intelligence, breaks down some stereotypes and myth, and yeah. So I was getting very disheartened when the Black Lives Matter movement was in the heavy um, spotlight because the people that I was talking to were not understanding my point of view and why it was so important to be having these discussions. And so I felt that if I can find literature to help me understand where they're coming from to be able to then provide them with the information that would best make them see a different way of thinking that this would be a good way to go. So yeah, I was really happy when I found this. The next book I found was Aidi by Roxane Gay, and this is a collection of short stories. It was on sale and the first story was called Motherfuckers, so I picked it up. <laughs> so plain and simple. I love Roxane Gay's writing. I read her not that bad short essays on rape culture and thought that that was absolutely phenomenal the way that she edited it together, as well as her own. Um, contribution and I was really keen to pick up more of their work. The next two were books that I've been eyeing off for the longest time but just never picked up for some unknown reason um, and the first one is Choice Words, a collection of writing about abortion. So the first one was Choice Words, a collection of writing about abortion edited by Louise Swin and 
I think this is going to be a really eye-opening and difficult but important book to read. Um, the back says, at the time when abortion is a criminal act and prosecution is a real part is a real risk in parts of Australia. This book is needed more than ever. In 2018, the world watched aghast when a Tasmanian woman lost her job at a high profile sporting agency for tweeting the truth. Even in states where abortion is legal, access can be nearly impossible. This treasury of stories highlights the sheer unspoken commonality of abortion. Women have been dealing with the risks and the fallout for longer than there is record. It is poignant, wise, funny, and true. A salute to those who have been working in the field, a celebration of how far we've come, an electrifying catawall at how far we still have to go, and a clarion call to action. I'm really curious to see what conversations are had in here and how people feel, and I just, this is going to be a really, really hard read, but I know that it's going to be so important and really resonate with me in a way that I think I'll be thinking about this for years. The next one is also one that is personal to me, and that is hashtag me too, stories from the Australian movement, uh, edited by Natalie Connu, Christine Neiman, Maggie Scott, and Miriam Sved. Um, and this is talking about the hashtag stories um, analysis and commentary in the Australian context. So being Australian, I'm very curious about it and how it impacted in Australia. I'm curious as worldwide, but I'd also like to see how it occurred in my own place. And this has collections by people that I am unfamiliar with, so I will be curious to see what their thoughts and analysis offer. Again, something that's quite relevant to myself, so I feel like, again, this is going to be sinking in the feelings and the happenings. <laughs> and then finally, from that stash, not, not, the, not the last book, oh fuck, um, I found this copy of Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman, and just there is my paperback copy. Um, I did lend it to my sister, and then she really enjoyed it, and then gave it back to me but I forgot that I had it and then I saw the hardcover and it was like seven dollars something eight dollars something um, and the only damage is here on the cover which I am a little bit bummed about but it's fine so I was like heal considering there's very little damage um, why would I not pick this up and this is following Eleanor Oliphant who's quite monotonous in her day and so this is looking at what happens when there is an event that causes her to branch out and reach out and meet someone new and they sort of come into her life and play a more prevalent role and just what occurs from there and it's her experiences throughout and April is reading this as I when I'm feeling filming this video and I feel that it's so slow to begin with so you can be invested in Eleanor as a character so that ending just is that much more impactful so yeah the next one I received when I got back from Sydney and that is Always Never Yours by Emily Wibberley and Austin Sidman Broker and what sold me was the fact that every guy she dates falls madly in love just not with her and I have this ongoing joke um, that when I break up with a partner, the next person that they get with will be a long-term serious partner or the love of their life. And yeah, so I saw that and went, <laughs> that's, that, that's relatable. So yeah, all her exes have found their one true love right after dating her. So um, whilst it's not completely accurate for me because I know that a lot of my exes have had long-term partners and then broken up after like five years, um, it still rings home to my experiences. <laughs> so I could not pick it up and I'm really curious to read this. I think it's a, a Romeo and Juliet, yeah, um, retelling, imagining sort of style thing. I'm not really sure how it plays in, um, but I mostly got it for hoping this character is me. The next was a pre-order that I had actually forgotten about. Um, I saw it somewhere on booktube. I watch a lot of booktube and so I thought it was harrowing um, and that is What Unbreakable Looks Like by Kate McLaughlin and this is following a girl who was human trafficked and then escaped from a life and then um, her boyfriend sexually assaults her um, and just dealing with the aftermath of having gone through so much trauma and then another thing uh, 
happens. Really, really tough read, I think, but I'm really interested in picking it up and reading a YA topic that I haven't touched on before. I've never read one about human trafficking, so yeah. On the last day of June, I went into an op shop and I found three amazing books. And the first one was, which I've never read, but I'm assuming they're going to be amazing. Why Be Happy When You Can Be Normal by Jeanette Winterson. Um, I believe this is the memoir of Jeanette Winterson who wrote Oranges Are Not The Only Fruit and this is just her experiences. I know that Jean from Jean's Bookish Thoughts really loves Jeanette Winterson's writing but I can't remember if she liked this book or not. So I'll have to look into it but I was like huh. I like memoirs anyway so why not and it was two bucks. I had a bargain buy month like a lot of books, a lot of books, but quite discounted. The last two that I got are Chunkers, and it is book one and book two of the The Life Ship Traders trilogy. These are mammoth. What in the world? So this is book one, uh, Ship of Magic, and book two, The Mad Ship. So for the Elderling Along, this is the next book that we are reading. I did buy the ebook and the audiobook and then found the physical book for $2. So I picked it up. Um, I think I have half of an edition. I think I have like one or two books that are in a similar edition to this. My Robin Hood books are completely sporadic in which version they are. Um, so I was happy to see the two of them together and Jesus, they're heavy. Now I just need to buy the third one in this edition. Oh, good lord. If anyone ever wants to trade editions, let me know. Because, like, yeah, I need help. <laughs> Got these two. Uh, two dollars each. And how could I say no? So these are the books that I bought this month. I bought 20 books this month, but only read 13. And two of those were... Three of those were digital copies. Um, so, yeah. I need to start reading my physical shelves more but glad that I've got each of those I did read one of them so that counts if you like this video feel free to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below what was the best book that you picked up this month all of mine I, ca I can't decide they were all brilliant I'm so excited to get to each and every one of them but yeah and if you'd like to see more of this mess feel free to subscribe and I'll hopefully see you in my next video bye why are thumbnails a thing it was, oh my god, I forgot about Eleanor Oliphant.